This guide is going to be a little different than my typical guides. This one is geared specifically for beginners, those that are new to handheld PCs or new to PC gaming in general. So we'll be going through things a little bit slower and I won't be going as in depth, but I will be explaining certain concepts that some of us take for granted that have been in the community for a while. So for those that are tuning in that have a little bit more experience, please check out the comments. And if you see somebody that's newer asking a question, please help them out. I'm going to do my best to get to them, but I might miss some. For the beginners watching this, once you've completed this video, check out my day one guide for some other tips. They're also beginner friendly. Now let's get to unboxing and I'll explain things in a little bit more detail. So first thing, this little circular thing at the bottom of your case is actually for your right controller when you want to go into FPS mode. I'll explain that a little bit later on. But if you're wondering what the purpose of this is, it does actually have a purpose. The next thing to note on the case is this little hole where you can plug in your charger so you can charge the device while it's in the case. If you're going to charge your device in the case, make sure that the device is fully shut down. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then do not charge it in the case. It's better to avoid that. The next thing I'll tell you about is the charger. So the charger is a 65 watt charger. So if you are going to use a different charger or want to pick up a spare one, make sure that it's at least 65 watts. If you're looking for a spare charger, any of the Ugreen ones that I've reviewed on my channel will definitely work. So make sure you get at least 65 watts, but 100 watt or 140 will work as well. If you try to charge it with your cell phone charger or something smaller, it's most likely not going to actually charge the device. Just keep that in mind. Okay, now that we've gone through the basics of the unboxing and explaining some of the components in there, let's go ahead and plug in our device and get it started. Now that it's plugged in, you're going to want to press the power button that's in the top right corner here. So press it until the light comes on and your device should power on shortly after. After about 15 seconds, your device is going to flip sideways. Don't worry, that's entirely normal. We're going to have it flip sideways while we go through the Windows setup. This is just because of the type of display that the Legion Go has. After a short bit of time, the Windows logo will appear and then you'll be able to go through the setup process. So the first thing we're going to want to do is flip our device here and then pick our country. Once you've selected your country, go ahead and press next. Next, you can choose your keyboard. If you just want the default, just press OK and press skip. Next, you're going to need to connect to Wi-Fi, so click on your network and type in the password. And once you finish that, press next. Your device is going to check for updates, so don't turn it off during this time. Just give it a minute or two to finish up. You'll get a screen that looks like this, followed by the Lenovo logo shortly after. After that, you're going to need to review the license agreement and then click accept. Then after that, go ahead and name your device. Make sure you pick a good one. Then you'll get another just a moment, followed by the Legion logo. This next screen is where you can sign into your Microsoft account. If you don't have one, you can set one up. Once you've signed in, you can choose to restore from another device's settings, or you can set up as a new PC. Then your next step is going to be to set a pin, followed by some privacy settings for your location, data that you're going to share, as well as advertisements. So choose as you'd like here. Now you can customize your experience. I suggest just toggling it to gaming and pressing next. After that, your device is going to get itself ready. This is going to take a few minutes, but once it's done, it's going to boot straight into Windows. And now that it's finished and you're inside Windows, there is one more thing I'll show you before we move on, and that's to make it so your display doesn't show portrait anymore. Right now, when you rotate your device, the display rotates with you. So we're going to go ahead and change that. But first, there's a tour here. You can go through this if you'd like, or you can just skip past it. Now we're going to fix the rotation issue here. So what we can do is long press on the desktop and click on display settings and then scroll down until you see rotation lock and make sure that you toggle that on. Now, when you rotate your display, it's not going to rotate with it. And now I'll take you through the steps of setting up your game stores. To start off, we're going to press the left Legion button, which you can see here on the top left of the controller to enter the Legion Space app. Next, I'll show you how to get your game stores set up. So if you go to Legion Space, there's actually a shortcut built in. So if you click on popular gaming platforms, you'll see the major ones pop up here. All you need to do is click on download. It's basically a shortcut that will take you to the website where you can download and install the software. For those that are beginners or new to PC gaming, I'll show you how to set up the four major stores. The first store is very easy because your device already has it installed and that is the Xbox store. Plus your device comes with three months of free Game Pass Ultimate. So let's go ahead and claim that now. And once you claim it, it's gonna give you a message about upgrading your membership. So if you were already signed up with Xbox Live Gold, this will convert it to a three to one ratio where three years of gold equals one year of Game Pass Ultimate. 
It'll also ask you to set up recurring billing. So if you just want to use the three month, you can set it up and then cancel immediately and you'll still have access for three months. So now you have access to Game Pass Ultimate. So I would definitely recommend taking a tour through here. There's quite a few games that are worth checking out. You can also get Starfield and a number of other games. So I definitely recommend taking advantage of that three months and trying out the service. Next up is Steam, so if you clicked on the link, it'll take you to this website, and all you have to do is click install Steam and then run the .exe. It's very simple to set up. Once it opens, you just need to pick your language to start, then you could pick your install location. I recommend just leaving the default. And then all you have to do is run Steam. And then after that's done, you'll be greeted with the sign in page. So you can either create an account or sign in with your existing. If you already had an account, you may get a code sent to your email. You're going to need that to sign in. And then once you put that in, Steam will boot up and you should be able to use it. I'll show you how to enable big picture mode though, because it's very handy on a handheld. If you want it to start in big picture mode, you go to Steam and then click settings. And then you want to go down to the interface. And here we have a toggle where you can start Steam in big picture mode, so you can turn that on if you want to use that feature, or leave it off if you prefer the classic mode. And for those that aren't aware, here's what big picture mode looks like. As you can see, it looks a lot more user friendly when you're using it on a small screen, so if you plan to use Steam as your primary store, I would recommend setting this up. To exit, you just press the Steam menu and then click Exit Big Picture Mode, which will change it back to the classic view that you see here. The next store we're going to get is the Epic Game Store, so after after you've clicked on the link in Legion Space, it'll take you to this page. You just need to click download Epic Game Launcher and then launch the file. And then you'll just need to go through a few prompts and install or create an account. Unfortunately, my recording software crashed, so I'm not able to show you that process. It is fairly simple and straightforward. You just have to follow the prompts. But one reason you want to get the Epic Game Store is they often have free games. They have a free game every month, sometimes two. So it's definitely worth getting. I mean, every time that there's a free game, I just add it to my library because why not? So definitely set this one up. They do have some good deals that come up as well. And now we'll install the last game store I'm going to go through, and that's for GOG Galaxy. So we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on Download GOG Galaxy 2. And then we're going to click on the .exe file that popped up in the top right corner. You'll get a pop-up that's going to download more files, then after that we can install and set up our account. After that completes, you can click Next and then accept the terms. You can pick the install location and decide whether you want a shortcut on the desktop or not, and then click Next. It'll start installing, and then once it's complete, you just need to sign in with your account or create a new one. If you're logging in with a pre-existing account, you may have an authentication that you need to type in, so check your email for this. And then the app will launch and you'll have full access to your library as well as the store. I do recommend downloading GOG Galaxy because they often have free games. And speaking of free games and good sales, I recommend checking out this next website that I'm going to cover quickly. Deals.gg. So this is a great place to get all the sales and discounts. You could find the free games summarized here. If you take a look, they have three different categories. They have new deals, best deals, and historical lows. You can also expand these to see the full section. And you can see that the best deals usually has the free games as well as historical lows. And the sources for these sales are from all of the major stores. So you got Steam, Epic, GOG Galaxy, you have uh, a few others, Microsoft Store. And if I click on one of the games, you can see that there's different options. So let's check out the Steam one because it's 50% off. Click Shop Now and it basically just links you to the store and to that product page. So I definitely recommend checking this out regularly. You can pin it to your browser and get quick access. It's great to see that you can find any of the sales. You can also go down and look at some of the bundles or different news, so check it out. I found it's usually the best way to get games because I can get them cheaper than I normally would. Next, we're gonna go through a tour of the Legion Space app. So this is where we had gotten the stores before. You just click on the game platforms and you can download any of these if you wanted more than the ones I showed you. There's also another game store that's built into the Legion Go and apparently it has sales that are specific to the Legion Go, but I haven't really checked it out too much. So if you have any interest, take a look at it. There might be a sale on something that you're looking for. Next is the library tab. So these are shortcuts to your game stores as well as some of your games. I did find that it wasn't pulling my games all the time. It pulled them from the Xbox app, but not from Steam or from my other stores. There's most likely a fix for it, but I didn't really look into it because I usually just boot up the different stores and launch from there. Now we'll check out the main tab, which would be our settings tab. Here you can see in general, you can change to a 24 hour clock or see about your device. In the performance tab, you can set your thermal mode, which is basically your TDP. 
I'll give you the quick version of what TDP is. So TDP is how much power you're allowing to go to your APU, that's your CPU and GPU together. As a general rule, the more power you provide, likely the more performance you're going to get. However, it's going to drain your battery faster. And at a certain point, the returns are diminished, so it's not worth going up. So on the Legion Go, that's around 22, 25 watts. You can gain a little bit up to 30 watts, but it's not significant. And if you don't want to worry about TDP, you could just leave the custom one alone and just go with quiet, balanced, or performance. You can interpret these as quiet being more battery life but less performance. Balance is the balanced version where it's a little bit more performance but also good battery life. And then performance mode is where you use the most amount of battery but you also get the most amount of performance. So if that's easier for you then just use the presets. For the OS power mode I would just set this to efficiency and then leave it alone. The next tab is for networks. I blanked mine out but this is where you can see your Wi-Fi networks. Bluetooth you can turn on or off. If you click display, that for some reason was crashing the app for me, so that'll probably be fixed soon, But so I'm not going to show that one today. Next is voice. This is for your speaker and for your mic. Then we have the controller tab where you can adjust your controller settings. There's quite a bit you can adjust in here, like your vibration settings. You can see your controller mode, battery life of the two controls, and you can also set different button mapping profiles, as well as testing your inputs. And you can also update your controllers. I'm not going to show you the button mapping right now. I may show it a little bit later in the FPS mode demo, but we'll get to that later. And then we have the customize tab where you can adjust the RGB on the joysticks to be different colors or to have different effects. Then disk space shows you a quick overview of your storage and what you have left. And then you have screenshots and downloads so you can configure where those are saved. And the last tab is Android games. So you just click that and it takes you to the Microsoft store to download the Amazon app store, which allows you to use Android apps on your device. Now I'll show you the quick access menu. So if you press it once, you'll get the one on the left. And if you press it twice, you'll get this other menu. This menu on the left is basically a shrunk down version and a shortcut to the Legion Space app. So we're gonna focus on the right menu that I just popped up there for a second. This pop-out menu on your right has most of your quick settings, like you have your brightness, your volume, Wi-Fi, resolution, refresh rate, lighting effects, all in one spot. And then you have the performance tab that shows your battery levels, your performance monitor, you can pop up a frame monitor to show your FPS, and then you can adjust the TDP like we talked about earlier, as well as the OS power mode. And then the last tab is productivity mode, where you can adjust your external display or the touchpad. And now that we've covered software, I'm going to cover a couple of things physically with the device, like the kickstand and the controllers. Okay, let's move on to the physical inspection. Whenever I get a new device, I do like to give it a quick physical overview just to make sure that nothing's broken, because it does happen. First, we'll start with the kickstand. Just make sure that you get the full range of motion and that it's not loose. And as you can see here, mine is perfectly fine. Next, we'll make sure that the controllers click on and off smoothly. So we're going to press the buttons at the back and then apply pressure downward. So I like to put my thumb at the bottom, middle finger at the top, and then just press down. And you should hear a click and then be able to pull it straight out. So let's test that on the other side now. The first time that you're doing this, it's going to feel like you're applying too much pressure, but it does actually take quite a bit to unclick it. When you're putting them back on, make sure that you have it lined up straight because otherwise it's not going to slide up properly and you might end up damaging it. So you can see that if it's kind of at an angle, here it won't go in so just make sure that you have it fully lined up once you have it lined up well it clicks right in now we'll take a quick overview of the FPS mode and the buttons that are associated with it so on the side here you have M1 and M2 and then at the back we have M3 and Y3 and then near the top we have a scroll wheel and at the bottom we have a toggle for FPS mode as well as a mouse sensor and when we look at the left controller, it's a little bit simpler. We just have Y1 and Y2. Now I'll show you how to set up for FPS mode. So we need to take that little circle thing that was in the case and we can just slot our controller in. It's actually magnetic, so it'll latch right on. Then you just need to toggle the FPS switch to on. Now that we have FPS mode turned on, M1 and M2 become right click and left click. So the top one, M1 is left click and the bottom one is right click. And as you can see in the example here, it works just like a regular mouse. So if you want to do any kind of configuration like the DPI or whatnot, you can go to the settings in Legion Space and then click on the controller tab. And here you can adjust the DPI, which is the most sensitivity. You can also adjust the mapping profiles. So you can see that there's a number of options here. When you're doing button mapping, you can either do the left control or the right control and you can select pretty much every button and decide what it's going to do. 
One thing to note here is it's not quite as intuitive as you would hope. So if you click on one of these buttons and try to select a different one, so let's click on keyboard. So let's pretend that I want to bind the button to the letter T. So if I click on it with the mouse, it just seems to go to the other menu. So it doesn't actually select it. You have to actually touch the screen to select it. So play around with that, see how you like it. You might need to set up a couple profiles for different games because some games are going to use different controllers. Now that it's set up, let's test it on a game. After using FPS mode for quite a while, I can say that it does work well, but it does take some adjustment. Like using a vertical mouse, it sounds like it should be easy. But for me, I did have quite a bit of a challenge to adjust to the vertical mouse. Uh, that could just be a me thing. But keep that in mind is you're going to need to invest some time to get the muscle memory. Another thing to note is my mouse, as you can see here, is not very sensitive. So I was actually able to adjust it later by going into the settings. And by settings, I mean the settings in the actual game itself. So that's pretty much it for FPS mode. You'll need to configure your keys to be what feels most natural. And mostly it's just getting used to the feel of it. But overall, I think it's pretty promising. And that's the basic setup guide for beginners. I hope that it was actually beginner friendly for you and that I didn't go too fast or anything. A couple of notes before we end today is to make sure to check out the day one guide once you're comfortable enough to try those. They're not too difficult and it is very beginner friendly. And not all of those tips have to be followed, they just help make the device a little bit more optimized. Secondly, if you're having any issues with your device that are related to Windows, you can actually just Google the common Windows error. You don't have to attach Legion Go to it. So if you're getting an error, for an example, let's call it an AMD error 6001. Well, you can just Google that so you can actually see what that is. And you don't have to add Legion Go because that may actually just take away from the results that would actually be able to help you. I also recommend joining the Handhelds United or the R Legion Go Discord so that you can get support. You can also drop comments on this video and I'll do the best that I can to help you and hopefully other members will do the same. And to close things out, uh, welcome to Handheld PC Gaming. I really hope you enjoy your Go. It can be a little daunting to get into PC gaming, but don't worry, you'll figure this out. If this video was helpful, consider leaving me a like and I hope that you'll stick around for the channel. Best of luck and thank you for watching.